Good morning, everyone. So uh, I'm Gopinath, uh, representing Hamad Medical Corporation, Qatar, and I'll be talking about the redefining quality indicators of an oncology center, a transition towards a person-centered care, and we have adopted British Columbia Health Quality Metrics. I have no actual or potential uh, conflict of interest in relation to this presentation. And the object, I'll be taking you through the background aim, methodology, result, discussion, and conclusion. Talking about the state of Qatar, state of Qatar occupies the small Qatar Peninsula with approximately 3 million population, out of which 90% are expatriates from 94 nationalities. So National Cancer Care Center is the sole cancer care provider in the state of Qatar with uh, more than patients from 60 nationalities and staff from more over 30 countries. Why this point is important is because we function in a completely cultural diverse environment. So the aim of the project is a periodic review and revision of the existing indicators with more relevance based on the need basis and advancement of center and a transition towards more patient person-centered care spanning around various dimensions of quality considering the quality, uh, cultural diversity among the staff and patients. So we adopted the British Columbia Health Quality Metrics, which defines the quality through five interconnected areas of care. And why British Columbia Health Quality Metrics is because if you look at oncology as a clinical care area, we can see that the patient or the person re revolves around the entire area. For example, the earlier nutrition level to the wellness or the early detection of cancer care to the acute treatment phase, the post-treatment phase, rehabilitation, and the pain and palliative care. So these are the five interconnected areas of care and the dimensions of quality which are defined as seven, where we can see safety, which is the patient-centered care, which is defined by IOM. IOM. One of the other dimension here is the appropriateness of treatment, which actually defines the appropriate care given to the patient at the right time, which also talks about the avoiding the abuse of treatment. So the department functioned on uh, team formation. We worked on <coughs> workshops, brainstorming, bottleneck analysis, monitoring and dissemination channel of communication of information. So what happened to the result of this uh, initiative was uh, the radiation oncology, for example, I'm giving you an example of radiation oncology. We have uh, broken down the departments into multiple departments, and we can see that we have introduced six new indicators into the existing indicator. And it is not just about the indicators what actually had helped us to achieve the targets. We analyzed the bottlenecks, few are perceived bottlenecks or few are actual bottlenecks. We started certain initiatives, including the uh, prospective risk analysis, including failure mode effect analysis. We introduced the net promoter score, patient satisfaction indexes, and few awards and recognitions because this is primarily a change of culture. So we introduced a voice of customer award to the best employee who have been nominated the highest time by the patients. We also had a patient-centric staff, which is a 360-degree evaluation from the, our own team members. We also looked into the effectiveness, appropriateness, and the efficiency of the system by analyzing the OP utilization. And we can see that these areas are very uh, interconnected, and few of the indicators are overlapping into each dimensions of quality. So this is a quality profile which we use internally in the hospital, which actually talks about entire dimensions of this quality in, uh, indicator, including the inclusion criteria, exclusion criteria, the formulas, the responsible person, the mo monitoring period, et cetera, which is very useful. So now coming to the discussion, patient-centeredness was one of the dimension which was defined by IOM, but the recent authors have told that patient-centeredness sh should be a throughout the entire pillars of dimension. So it is very easy uh, to say than done. How can we do that? So the primary difference between patient-centeredness and person-centeredness are it are interlinked, primarily which involves the healthness phase as well. And we also need to look at the value-based model by replacing the clinical outcomes into patient-reported uh, outcome measures as well as patient-reported experience measures. And how? 
Yes, we can measure it, we can improve it, but just by weighing a pig, it won't become fatter. There should be a proper analysis, interpretation, etc. Transition from what is the matter, which we currently do in a retrospective way, we ask the patient what was the matter, we need to change that to what matters to you. We should be a, more of a prospective approach. Change management by cultural changes. And one of the major initiatives what we have taken is a person journey mapping, cancer journey mapping in the ca uh, cancer care in the state of Qatar. So this is another initiative and primarily dissemination of this information not just confined to boardroom, but throughout the team members. So it's a very simple, effective type, uh, step, and there are different quality domains by different models, but each in organization can actually tailor this according to their clinical requirement and environmental and economic requirements. So these are the few initiatives, the photographs, we can see the award recognitions, etc. We are still in a hard copy of patient-centered uh, verbatim. We are moving into electronic form. And this is the team which had worked for this initiative. And thank you very much for providing this platform. And we look forward to see you at World Cup FIFA 2022. Thank you very much. Thank you, Mr. Gopinath. Open to the jury. Uh, thank you, sir. It was a good presentation. Uh, yeah, hi. Nice. And, uh, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh, I just had one. When you talk about patient and uh, person-centered, I mean, what? What is the difference you focus on? Like patients is, I thought, this is, is it the same? You're talking throughout only about the patients and his satisfaction and his, uh, so what do you differentiate between a patient and a person? So in, the a, same? in a person's life journey, if you look at different care continuum, it starts with the early detection, the health and wellness program, etc. Then the active treatment form, that is where the patient centeredness come and the post-treatment. So it takes care of the continuum of care, actually. And it is not just about the patient perspective. So what happens many a times our policies are upside down. We create a policy and we okay. try to push it down to the patient and the person, rather than taking the feedback from the patient, the relative, from the society and community, and take it as a bilateral way, and we need to incorporate this into the policies and our formulation. But you've not mentioned like how many samples, like how many... I did it, but uh, due to oh, I sorry, could I hear the bell ringing, so I had to oh, rush through that. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. What was the problem identified? So one is the cultural change. Uh, one is that we had uh, patients from 60 countries and our staff is from 30 countries. So we have a very, very conservative community who probably have to uh, uh, reluctance to come out telling that there is a lump in the breast even because of a cultural diversity issues. So one is that interaction, the communication, and coming, bringing every culture under one umbrella was one of the major uh, challenges or opportunities which we are looking at. Was there a baseline data before doing the study and a post-analysis of it? So initially, when we, before we started, there was no National Cancer Center patient data. It was completely under one umbrella of Hamad Medical Corporation. So the data was very diluted. That is where we uh, thought that we were not able to focus specially on oncology care. That is where we started rolling out the patient feedback mechanism. So the initial patient feedback mechanism was primarily on the cultural elements and the psychological element. So we thought that patient safety, when we focus too much on the physical safety of the patient by introducing a lot of uh, retrospective and prospective risk analysis, some way we are actually diluting on the cultural and psychological safety of the patient. So the whole project was to look into the cultural and psychological safety, which actually prohibits many of the patients to come forward for the treatment and even to discuss very openly with our care providers. Any study done on the impact of the staff? Sorry? S impact on the staff, any study done after this? So this is uh, rolled, we started this in January 2022. And uh, we have rolled out, we could see that there is an open communication. We are still redefining it and evolving over a period of time. So the duration is two months. Sorry? The duration is two so months. So the whole activity took one year uh, by forming the team, revising the indicators, understanding the bottlenecks. Because it's a public sector, we need to understand that Hamad Medical Corporation is a public sector. So there are, uh, it, is, it has its own pace of implementation. So we rolled out the new indicators from January 2022. That's right. so when are you going to do the post analysis? So it's a continuous, so every month the voice of customer data, what we analyze, uh, we actually create a dashboard. 
Initially, which was done only in the quality uh, committee meeting, we translated, we made it a quality dashboard, we sent it across every team members, and there's a cultural sensitization, and the post-impact would be uh, after six months and one year. Thank you. Thank you, Gopinath. Thank you very much. Good presentation.